Tough to think about what he should have said or would have said there, but yeah. still, the sound is fascinating to me. Lewis Riddick, I, I wonder what your reaction is to it. And not only that, what do you do to right this ship in Dallas? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a two-part thing. Let's just start with personnel, and then we'll get to Mike quickly. Look, I think as good as this football team is, I think you're starting to see cracks as far as making sure that the lines of scrimmage are taken care of going into the future. So I think they need to make sure they get some depth on the offensive line and make sure, especially at center, and make sure they have somebody at tackle that can be a guy who's an up-and-comer and really make sure that that stays a strength. And Will McClay, the guy who really runs the show down there from a personnel perspective, will do that. Defensively, make sure they have some beef on the interior, that they have some big men up front that can really capture the line of scrimmage. So you have teams like San Francisco who don't come in there and basically just knock you upside the head and say, look, you can't do anything about it because you just don't have the manpower to stop it. You just don't. And I know San Francisco does that to everybody, but these guys aren't superheroes, man. Okay? They're, it's not like they are from another planet. You just have to make sure that you have the people that can combat it. And then, from a big picture, top-down perspective, I think you have to consider whether or not, as much as I like Mike, and I've known Mike since I've been in college, he was on the staff at the University of Pittsburgh when I was playing there back in the late 80s, early 90s. Do you consider elevating a guy like Dan Quinn? Do they need new leadership at the very top for those specific situational moments that have been their Achilles heel this year? You can't get away from it. You just can't. And as much as Mike tries to talk his way around it and through it and explain it and give, I don't want to say excuses, but give excuses for it, <laughs> it hasn't been good enough. And we know that that is something that really can tip the scales as far as wins and losses for teams when you have teams that are evenly matched like it is in the NFL every week. I think you have to start having that discussion whether or not that's the best move. That's interesting, especially when you talk about considering elevating Dan Quinn. Bart, when you hear this and you hear McCarthy sound, what do you think? I mean, for me, I don't get the infatuation with Dan Quinn. I mean, he took a, a defense that was horrible and made him average. I mean, this was a defense that was 19th in the league. I've never finished 19th in the league in defense ever in an 11-year career. But I understand, listen, attitude reflects leadership. And what the attitude and leadership is, is portraying is excuses. They're pointing the finger. You hear it coming from McCarthy. You hear it coming from Dak Prescott. Until they change that mentality in that building and start earning that star and the respect that's supposed to come that star, they're never going to get over the hump. We've always knew that the Dallas Cowboys was a soft team because they walk around with this bravado like they've accomplished something, and they're not the great 90 teams of Leon Lett, Deion Sanders, Troy Aikman, but they walk around with that persona. And until you start making it a little bit tougher around there, they're going to always be a team that gets beat up by teams that have a tougher mentality because they always look to point the finger and never the thumb. They never take accountability mm. and say, hey, it's on us. We have to be better. And it's too cushy around there. Yeah. That's on them. And, and, and Bart, you know this. They, they've got the talent, right? We can we, 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 sit, we sit every week and we talk about how good they are top to bottom. There are coaches all around the league who would kill for this yes. roster. But when you're losing just based on pure lack of toughness, that's got to reflect on leadership yeah. there. And, and that's exactly what we saw happen against the 49ers. Weak the playoffs runs. are about the run game and tough defense. And they didn't do either of that. And that's why they lost that game. So while I understand the exit interview, the press conference at the end of the season, Mike McCarthy's feeling pressure. He has to, knowing the talent. He's, he probably has better talent on this team, with the exception of, of course, having Aaron Rodgers, than any team he's ever coached before. He knows they needed to be better. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day for them, mm -hmm. the consistency was their biggest issue. They beat up the bad teams. That's not good enough. And that's where they've yeah. got to get better in the offseason, figuring out how to improve that run game and get better on defense, to your point about Dan. Okay, so you're talking toughness. You're yeah. talking consistency. So, D. Wood, I come to you. A lot of those things, I think, when we as fans look at it, say that comes from top down. That comes from the head coach on down. Does Mike McCarthy bear the brunt of the blame for how this team performed? He's the head coach. He's ultimately responsible for what's, you know, how his team comes out and plays, right? That's true of any CEO of any company. And so when you look at the totality of the Dallas Cowboys, one of the glaring weaknesses that we talk about as it relates to Mike McCarthy is in-game management, clock management. Because, see, the game of, the game of football, and, and Bart and Lewis knows this, 
The difference between the really good teams and the bad team is so small. And you have to be on the situational aspect of the game. And that's been an Achilles heel of Mike McCarthy. And to me, that is a reason why you possibly move on from him because it costs you football games at the end of the day. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And he and said he feels safe, right? Yeah. Jerry Jones says, you know, that, that, that things are good to, to Mike McCarthy. <sighs> uh -huh. But Jerry Jones has changed his mind. He wants to win Super Bowls. He doesn't of care course. about what he's saying. And there is no bigger pressure but, cooker than nope. in Dallas. We'll Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.